Just like other organs in our body, our kidneys need several vitamins to perform at their best. In fact, there's one particular vitamin whose deficiency has been noticed in around 80% of CKD patients. Generally, vitamin deficiency can also cause mineral imbalances in the body, often resulting in various health issues, including heart attacks, impaired nervous system, diabetes, kidney stones, and sometimes even chronic kidney disease. So today, let's learn about some vitamins that your kidneys might be craving. Let's begin. Number one, vitamin D. One of the primary functions of kidneys is processing vitamin D and converting it into its active form that our body needs to perform various functions, like immune function, mood regulation, and maintaining strong bones and teeth. However, in people suffering from CKD, the kidneys are unable to activate vitamin D partially or completely. In fact, according to recent studies, chronic kidney disease might be linked with a high occurrence of vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D deficiency has been identified in about 80% of CKD patients. The major biological function of vitamin D is to keep calcium and phosphorus levels within the normal range. This vitamin has been shown to enhance the efficiency of the small intestine to absorb calcium from the diet. Studies show that with lower vitamin D levels, calcium absorption may decrease by about 10 to 15%. On the other hand, healthy vitamin D levels can increase the absorption of calcium by 30 to 40%. Another key benefit of vitamin D is that it helps to prevent cardiovascular disease. Studies show that vitamin D enhances the production of nitric oxide, a molecule that dilates the arteries, helps keep the blood flow smooth, and helps keep blood pressure in a healthy range. This is important because factors such as age, lack of exercise, a poor diet, smoking, and taking antibiotics can also cause your levels of nitric oxide to drop. Some studies have also reported a close association between low vitamin D levels and a high risk of developing heart disease. Generally, you can easily get vitamin D from natural food sources, such as egg yolk, fish, cheese, yogurt, bananas, spinach, and cod liver oil. Vitamin D2 and D3 are commercially available as over-the-counter supplements. However, most experts recommend taking vitamin D3 for potential health benefits. The daily recommended intake of vitamin D for both men and women varies with age. 13 to 70 years old need 600 international units, or 15 micrograms, while older than 70 requires 800 international units, or 20 micrograms. However, if you have CKD or other similar conditions, your doctor might recommend calcitriol supplements. Calcitriol is the active form of vitamin D. Its doses range from 600 to 1200 milligrams per day. But it's really important to talk to your doctor about the appropriate dosage for you, depending on your health condition, medications, and risk factors. Number two, vitamin B9 or folate. Another very important vitamin for kidneys is folate or vitamin B9. Folate is primarily needed by our body to produce red blood cells, white blood cells, and genetic material, and for breaking down carbs and producing energy from them. It also plays a crucial role in reducing the levels of homocysteine in the body. Homocysteine is an amino acid and is often used as a marker of inflammation, which in turn is linked with many chronic diseases, including heart disease, type 2 diabetes, neurodegenerative conditions, and several others. But why is it important for kidneys? Well, according to studies, vitamin B9 or niacin helps control phosphorus levels in people with kidney disease, especially the ones who are on dialysis. High amounts of phosphorus can cause further damage to already damaged kidneys. Plus, people with kidney disease are very likely to develop B9 deficiency, particularly the ones on a protein-restricted diet and those who are on dialysis. Some of the richest food sources of vitamin B9 are beef liver and other organ meats, fish, poultry, dark leafy greens, beans, peanuts, and sunflower seeds. It is recommended to take 400 micrograms of folate for most adults. However, pregnant or breastfeeding women need 500 to 600 micrograms of folate daily. Moreover, if you are taking certain medications, especially antibiotics or anti-seizure medications, folate might interact with them and lower their levels in the blood. So, make sure to consult your doctor before taking any supplements, especially if you are taking other medications. Number three, vitamin B12 or cobalamin. 
Anemia doesn't just develop due to the deficiency of iron. It can also happen in a person with B9 and B12 deficiency as well. Both these vitamins play crucial roles in the production of red blood cells and in maintaining their normal sizes. People with kidney disease, especially the ones with CKD or those on dialysis, might develop symptoms of anemia sooner or later. So many healthcare experts recommend B6, B9, and B12 supplements to kidney patients. We'll also learn what B6 does for the kidneys, so stay with us. For most healthy people, foods such as liver, beets, sardines, dairy products, and eggs are rich sources of B12. But if you've kidney disease and are on a restricted diet, or you don't seem to get enough folate or B12, you can take B12 supplements. The best way is to take vitamin B12 tablets with water. Many experts recommend taking these supplements on an empty stomach or two hours after a meal. The recommended daily dosage is 2.4 micrograms. Avoid taking more than what your doctor has recommended for you because if your kidneys are already damaged, especially due to diabetes, excess intake might cause further harm to the kidneys. Common signs of vitamin B12 deficiency include feelings of tiredness, low energy, mouth ulcers, sore and red tongue, muscle weakness, and blurred vision. So, if you're noticing these signs, consult your healthcare expert to determine the exact reason and recommendations for supplements if needed. Number four, vitamin B6. Another B vitamin, known as B6 or pyridoxin, helps with the absorption of vitamin B12. It's particularly important for the production of hemoglobin, maintaining nerve function, breaking down proteins, and even in the production of antibodies by our immune cells. One of the main functions of vitamin B6 in kidney health is that it might help in preventing kidney stones. Studies show that supplementing people who had high oxalate levels with vitamin B6 might reduce their oxalate content, and hence, a lower risk of developing kidney stones. Another reason to take vitamin B6 with a declined kidney function is that it's a water-soluble vitamin, so people with CKD or those on dialysis might develop its deficiency and be at a high risk of developing complications associated with it. Vitamin B6 deficiency may cause various problems including skin inflammation, formation of red and greasy rashes on the skin, numbness in hands and feet, dryness around the mouth, feelings of confusion, and even seizures in severe cases. Fish, liver, other organ meats, starchy vegetables, and potatoes are rich in vitamin B6. Pistachios, tuna, pinto beans, chicken breast, sunflower seeds, and sesame seeds also contain vitamin B6. The most effective vitamin B6 supplement is pyridoxal 5-phosphate, which is the active form of pyridoxin. The active form of vitamin B6 is 10 times more effective than its inactive form. The daily recommended dosage of vitamin B6 is 1.1 milligrams per day for people between ages 19 and 50 and 1.3 milligrams for people above 50. B6 supplement doses range from 25 to 500 milligrams. Be sure to get the appropriate dosage from a healthcare expert according to your body's needs and health condition. Number five, vitamin B1 or thiamine. Our bodies primarily need it for metabolism, particularly for the conversion of carbohydrates into energy. It also plays a role in muscle contraction and nerve function. Thiamine is also important for kidneys as it has been shown to prevent the formation of kidney stones. Thiamine deficiency has also been linked with high oxalate levels and giving thiamine to kidney stone patients might also decrease the rate of new stones forming according to studies. B1 is often recommended for people with diabetes too, especially the ones at a high risk of developing kidney damage due to high blood sugar. Thiamine is also considered good for heart health as it helps regulate blood pressure. Both diabetes and high blood pressure are major risk factors for kidney disease, so controlling these factors could mean a significantly lower risk of kidney problems and hopefully a quicker recovery from them. Though rare, thiamine deficiency can happen due to several factors, including overconsumption of alcohol and use of diuretics like coffee, tea, and cola drinks. Some common indications of thiamine deficiency are tiredness, fatigue, unexplained weight loss, loss of appetite, poor memory, and sleep disturbances. You can get thiamine naturally from cereals, beans, nuts, meat, and yeast. But if you're on a restricted diet and might not be able to get enough B1 from foods alone, 
you can take thiamine supplements with the help of your doctor. The daily recommended dose for adult men is 1.2 mg and for adult women is 1.1 mg per day. B1 supplement doses range from 50 to 250 mg. You can get the appropriate dosage from your healthcare expert. Number 6. Vitamin K. Vitamin K mainly comes in two forms, K1 and K2. K1 is primarily involved in blood clotting, which is crucial for wound healing. K1 is mostly found in plant-based foods, like leafy greens, including spinach, kale, and broccoli, and tomatoes, berries, and pomegranates. K2 is very important for bone health and heart health. It activates osteocalcin, a type of protein that takes the calcium from arteries and binds it with bone matrix. This way, it not only helps strengthen bones and teeth, but also prevents calcium from depositing in the arteries and prevents calcium oxalate stones from forming when kidneys try to filter it out. K2 is mostly found in animal-based foods, including meat, eggs, and dairy products. But if you're on a protein restricted due to kidney disease, you can get it from fermented foods like natto, kimchi, and sauerkraut. Supplements might be a good option too. Generally, adult women need around 90 micrograms of K2 per day, and men need around 120 micrograms of K2 per day. K1 deficiency is quite rare. It mostly happens in newborn babies and is usually treated with K1 injections. Symptoms of vitamin K2. Deficiency include nausea, vomiting, dizziness, easy bruising, nosebleeds, black stools, and sometimes blood and urine. If you have CKD, are on dialysis, or if you recently had or are waiting for a kidney transplant, your healthcare expert might recommend K2 supplements. Avoid taking over-the-counter K2 supplements since they can interfere with any medications you might be taking, particularly blood thinners, which many people use for heart problems, bleeding disorders, and other associated conditions. Another important thing to note is the risk of vitamin K toxicity. Vitamin K is a fat-soluble vitamin, meaning our body can store it with fats, primarily in the liver. Taking too much of it via daily supplements can increase the risk of toxicity, which can be particularly harmful for people with CKD whose kidneys are already struggling or unable to flush out an extra amount of it. So it's really important to discuss and get a proper prescription for K2 supplements from a healthcare expert. Number seven, vitamin A. This vitamin is well known for its vision-enhancing properties, boosting the immune system, and providing support for growth and development. Vitamin A is crucial during the formation of kidneys during embryonic development. It also plays an important role as an anti-inflammatory substance, helping the immune system to do its thing, as well as lowering inflammation in the body, including kidneys. Studies show that getting enough vitamin A from diet or supplements might lower the risk of developing type 2 diabetes and may even enhance the ability of the pancreas to produce insulin. A study in 2024 found that vitamin A lowers the risk of retinal damage due to high blood sugar. This effect also applies to kidneys, which are more prone to damage from high blood sugar. Some of the richest foods of vitamin A include sweet potatoes, kale, apricots, papaya, mangoes, cod liver oil, and berries. However, if you're on a restricted diet and are vitamin A deficient, you can take vitamin A supplements in the form of capsules or tablets. Vitamin A supplements come in two forms, performed vitamin A, the kind that's found in animal products and multivitamins, and provitamin A or beta-carotene, the kind that's mostly found in plant-based products. The daily recommendation of vitamin A for adult men is 900 micrograms, and for adult women is 700 micrograms. More importantly, similar to vitamin K, vitamin A is also a fat-soluble vitamin, so there's a risk of vitamin A toxicity in people with CKD. So be sure to get the appropriate dosage and recommendations from your healthcare expert. Number eight, vitamin E. Vitamin E essentially acts as an antioxidant, meaning it neutralizes the harmful free radicals that can damage cells and tissues in your body, including the ones in the kidneys. According to a 2023 study, getting enough vitamin E can be beneficial for protecting the kidneys from damage and may even help recover damaged kidneys. Vitamin E has also been shown to help regulate blood pressure, mainly by improving HDL cholesterol and the ability of blood vessels to contract and relax. 
The natural sources of vitamin E include mangoes, kiwi, green leafy vegetables, whole grains, sunflower seeds, peanuts, almonds, and vegetable-based oils. As for supplements generally, the recommended amount of vitamin E for adults is 15 mg per day. However, being a fat-soluble vitamin, the chances of vitamin E toxicity from long-term use of supplements are still there, so people with CKD or other associated conditions should discuss the dosage with a healthcare expert. If you want to learn more about how you can improve kidney health, be sure to watch these videos on our channel.